Hey, Brian, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Going good, man. Had a blast with you last week. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. So last week we were all at CRO Summit in Boston. It was a absolutely killer event. Uh, we had around 150, 160 uh, CROs and VP of sales uh, converge at the Langham in Boston for a full day of networking. We had a bunch of awesome speakers like Mark Roberts from Stage Two Capital. Um, that was like one of my personal favorites. And Brian, you 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 asked like a really solid question to Mark uh, around adoption of AI and what it means because um, that's such a hot topic in, in the VC ecosystem. So yeah. it was cool to hear your perspective and get his perspective as well on that too. Well, I think it fits really well with the theme of this episode, which is, you know, post-hype realities of AI. So, um, you know, he shared some really great insight and I've certainly seen it as well. There's a lot of companies talking about AI. Every single CRO yep. that I interacted with at the summit had said they're thinking about it and they're looking for use cases, but there's not a lot of purchasing or budgeting going on around AI right now. And so you're seeing a lot of really smart people build really interesting solutions, but not actually get traction in the market. And I think this is where, you know, you and I have played back and forth on this because, of course, you get hit up all the time for AI tools as well. Um, that build versus buy conversation. And it's one of the reasons I love showing people the build side of the equation um, is that I, I think it it helps create a little bit more progress, even if you're still making the case to your CFO that, you know, making investments in AI makes sense. Exactly. And that was the exact conversation that we had a few weeks ago where uh, our goal was to match attendees with each other from CRO Summit. So, you know, Bob is going to get matched with Mary because we want them to connect because they have similar interests or they have similar backgrounds. So our goal was to create some sort of a matching program. And there are a lot of solutions out there uh, to solve for that internally in Pavilion. In our community, we use one through Slack and through our member hub. Um, but for the summit, yeah, what, we were, what's that tool called again? Uh, we Orbit? use a tool called Orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Orbit. I love it. I've been using Orbit and gotten a couple great introductions from it. And I think most of you that have community programs, probably or Slack, you know, Slack communities probably have some sort of, you know, peer to peer intro bot. Um, so, so that's been pretty cool, but we decided to build our own anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and the use case for this is different than, than perhaps something like an Orbit. So yeah, our goal was to connect. Uh, these two people together, these two people together, these two people together based on, you know, common uh, interests and, and backgrounds. So to this episode, we're going to go through uh, sort of the process on, on what we did uh, to, to get to this point and, and ultimately to the execution of, of matching folks uh, uh, via email and HubSpot. Um, but just to set the stage, like this, this type of matching solution can be used in a lot of different ways, not just you're an event planner and you want to match attendees together. There's so many other use cases. And I mean, Brian, I, we were just gabbing about this earlier. I think one key use case is if a customer says, hey, um, or a potential customer in your pipeline says, hey, I want to talk to one of your existing customers. Well, you could use something like what we're going to discuss today to match them with a customer that, you know, is the right fit in terms of size and uh, maybe problems that they're solving for all that stuff. If you've got the volume of, of customers for it. So there's a lot of good use cases for this type of thing. Yeah. I'd love to talk through some of those as, okay, as we build this. So just to give everyone the scenario, what we did is we took the list of attendees and then we had AI pair them up together and then just sent an email to each attendee and said, Hey, you've been paired with sound. So go look for them. Here's their LinkedIn profile. And here's a summary on who they are. And from what I saw, it was a hit. Um, yeah, I, you know, I could even maybe pull up my my own email here. That sounds great. Yeah, I've got it right here. Yeah, thanks, so, Josh. This was so, ultimately yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah. So this was mine. So uh, you know, obviously, Mark's focus on AI investing right now, and I'm building an AI startup, and so it connected us. But you can see here, really simple. And one of the things I love about this, it was really light. It came out, you know, early in the morning, so everybody was already there. It came out, everybody's inbox got hit with this, and it was just one more accelerator to say, hey, there's someone here that we think you have a lot in common with and you could learn a lot from. And it was pretty popular. I think seven or eight people actually mentioned it to me. Um, and uh, a few of them made some great connections. So what I wanna really encourage you right now, especially if you're in RevOps or you're a head of sales, I want you to put your headset on and I want you to recognize that 
most of what we do in revenue is actually very linear. We take one person and we move them through a funnel of a process, but inside your database is massive social capital. You're interacting with people. You could be connecting to others all the time. And uh, one of my favorite VC mentors, Shane Mack, um, when I was looking at, you know, how do I build my network? How do I advance my career? How do I be successful as a startup founder? He said the most important thing he's ever done is add value to his network. And I said, what does that, what does that mean? What does it mean to add value? I don't know. Like I try, you know, I try to be helpful, but like, how do you add value to your network? Yeah. Especially when you don't even know necessarily what's going on with that person at this time, if you're not in like a text level relationship with him. And he said, oh, you introduced them to someone who could be helpful to them. Are they trying to hire someone? Are they looking for advice? Could they use mentorship from someone who's the next stage up? And once that clicked, it was a game changer. So I'm really excited for, even if you're an IC salesperson, I'm really excited for you to learn from this build in public, how to begin to think about what, when I have a scenario where I could add value to the people that I'm prospecting into or connecting with customers, whatever it might be, um, and connecting them with others who would help them build their network. And if you skip back to the first couple episodes that we did, we did something very similar in the sense of we had prospective members of Pavilion and we wanted to match them up with a local chapter head. And we found commonalities between the two to create a matching email. So go check out episodes one and two where we discuss that. The link is in the description. Um, but this is very, very similar. But the challenge, Brian, right, was how do you build a matching algorithm like Tinder for professionals? Like that's the exactly. way I, I was texting you at midnight the day before. I was like, dude, this is just like Tinder for professionals. Here we go. <laughs> Swipe right on me. I love it. Yeah, and ultimately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the punchline in advance for this Build a Public episode. We were not successful. We were not able to use AI to do this matching algorithm. It's actually a well-known kind of current limitation of chat GPT and others that you can't just feed it a CSV list and it will feed you one back. Now, there are solutions to this problem. And I would invite you, if you're watching this and you have a quick solution or recommendation, go ahead and drop it in the comments. This is the chance where we're going to actually be building a little bit more with the community. So think of this as the setup. We're going to show you how we delivered a value prop with some automation and AI, not just AI. And we're going to show you how we sort of worked our way backwards to the automation by trying to do it with AI first. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. We'll jump right in. All right, so we're just going to start by visualizing this in a Miro board. And there's some things here you could see that, you know, just from a pure automation perspective, you could do a lot of what we're attempting to do already. Um, we're just looking at the title of the individuals, CRO, CMO, CEOs being the most common. And the industries that they're in, fintech, insurance, maybe they're also selling to go to market teams. And then in headcount, 500, 1,500, 50, and 2,500. And this is actually pretty indicative of sort of like the broad range that we saw at the, the summit. We can pair people just on these items alone, just on forever graphics. What's your title? What's your industry? How, what's your head count? But the reason that people are going to want to connect with each other is going to get much more rich and much more interesting and more importantly, okay, I've connected to you to someone else who makes sense for you to talk to you, but can I give you anything that would help you start the conversation with them? And that's where we're having AI go and grab that LinkedIn summary. Now, the dream would be that we would actually match people based on the content of their LinkedIn profiles. But as you'll see, that's really challenging to do yet with some of these tools in terms of a light implementation. And we're going to get into that. So why don't I just start with sharing this Pavilion only list. Now we're zoomed way the hell out here, but you can basically see I've got myself in the Pavilion team because we don't want to share anybody else's information publicly. So we're going to show you the process just with the Pavilion team and so on. But we, we took that information out of HubSpot, all your plastic stuff, where they live, their industry, all you know, their LinkedIn profiles, and so on. And the first thing that we wanted to do is just grab those LinkedIn profiles and get that summarization. Anything to add there, Josh, while I'm pulling this up? No, no. So when we do talk about like the challenges that we had with AI, I want to be clear that we did use AI to do the scraping of the LinkedIn. We did use AI the AI to company them. like you're showing here in the copy.ai workflow. And the real challenge, which we'll get to, is the actual like matching component. The actual um, matching. Although it was nice to be able to at least get, you know, part, part, partially or most of the way there. 
uh, with, you know, the scraping technology and the bucketing and stuff uh, that copy.ai was able to give us. Yeah, you could think of this as in the end result that I want to do, I'm going to send you this email and I'm going to send you a summary on the individual. I'd be hiring a freelancer to go research every single one of those individuals and write up that summary. Um, but with AI and scraping, I can do it really quick. So fans of the show will know Copy AI. That's the tool that we're using here that builds these workflows. And uh, I'm going to get into the, you know, a little bit more into how to customize Copy AI in this build, we're building on lessons that we've learned from the previous three episodes. So for those of you that might just have found this episode on your own, let me give you a quick review. We're doing a few things here. We're getting the LinkedIn profile as an input. And the nice thing about copy is I can just type the workflow that I want and it will produce something relatively similar to this. But you can say, given a certain LinkedIn profile, go scrape you know, their profile and their company's profile and give me a summary on them. And I polished it down a little bit. So this scraped LinkedIn step takes that profile, scrapes it, gets the company LinkedIn from that profile. This is one of the things I really like is as long as you have the person's profile, AI can go get the company's profile. And what I've learned is when you have a real spectrum of how much people invest in their LinkedIn profiles, or their company profile. If you have both and you use that to create your profile on that individual, you get them in the context of the work that they're doing. And that turns out to be very impactful in terms of creating this type of network-based introduction. It's not just who someone is, it's who someone in at the role in the company that they are in that makes them valuable from a professional networking perspective. And might I add here that, um... This is going to be your most accurate way to find out where somebody works today in a point of time. Um, we use an enrichment tool internally uh, for, for certain enrichment, and I have found that oftentimes it can be inaccurate with company names, and it makes for a really annoying and frustrating experience to have to do big data cleanup and, and have somebody respond and get those get those uh, auto responders that are like, oh, this person no longer works at the company and then you got to figure out who they are. I mean, this is like the best way to figure out the current status of, a, of somebody. Um, so I'm really, I've been using this in a lot of different ways and it's just been incredibly helpful. Yeah, and Clay is an amazing tool. If you don't know clay.com, Clay is an amazing tool where you can scrape uh, LinkedIn profiles at scale. It's very easy to use, especially for anyone that's got a RevOps background. And uh, there's a lot of functionality here that Copy also has. So you can use either tool. We're going to be using Clay in future episodes when we talk about the scaled model, because I find Clay is better for scaled use cases, whereas Copy is better for designing the actual AI workflows that you want. But this is a really popular topic. It comes up all the time. It just came up in the CEO community chat in Pavilion. So I want to take a minute to talk about it. It's really important to understand that your key data enrichment providers, and let's just call them out. We're talking about Zoom Info. We're talking about Apollo. For you savvy people, we're talking about Clay. And there's a few others that are out there. It's really important to understand that the, what I would call legacy identity and contact information category, which Zoom Info most certainly was the category leader of. I think Apollo's done an amazing job challenging them. What's important to understand is that they are buying data lists from other marketing firms. Let me show you the big difference between buying from a data library and using LinkedIn. If I go to LinkedIn and I go to Apollo's uh, page here, who wrote this? Apollo did. It's an amazing difference when you take uh, data enrichment information on a company and you compare that to what's in LinkedIn. Let me show you one of my favorite examples of this. John Deere makes tractors, right? Clearly they're in the business of machinery manufacturing. But if I go to their about page, right? What is John Deere in the business of? pushing the boundaries on what's possible to make more productive and sustainable life going forward. And what do they highlight? Our tech-enabled products. John Deere thinks of itself as a tech company because that's how they want Wall Street to think of themselves. So there is a 
unclosable gap between the data that is in LinkedIn and the data that is anywhere else. And that unclosable gap is the person themselves told you what they want you to think about them. And so when you take that information, imagine how much more impactful your communications are gonna be if you're reflecting back to them who they are seeking to be out in the world, right? It's the absolute game changer. And of course, this is true for people as well. So um, not only can you get you know insights from LinkedIn that you can't get anywhere else about companies that I find really helpful, but you know scraping the information from LinkedIn really is, in my view, the most durable, accurate, and long-term solution for having real information about how to reach out to people. You make a really good point, and this kind of ties back to the the LinkedIn summary component that we're building in copy.ai is you're, you're summarizing and then, and then ultimately, if you do want to make an email, produce an email to send outbound to that person, you're taking that summary data that that person personally wrote about themselves and making an email that uses the same language, the same tone. And that truly is how you scale personalization with AI versus saying as a job title at company name, exactly. I'm sure you face problem A related to job title. Like that, that's, that's kind of like the old school personalization way of doing it. And this just makes things way more effective. Um, so yeah, that's a good point on the, on like what the person says and who they are versus what we might think they are by using an enrichment tool that just has a summary of their roles and responsibilities. Yeah. So, uh, certainly what we're laddering up to here ultimately is, should we enrich our CRMs with the LinkedIn profile of every person and every company that matters to us? And I would advocate that that is a very worthwhile investment, especially if you want to build AI workflows, because the amount of content that you have to work with is so much larger than just, you know, the firmographics or the demographic cells that you typically fill out in a CRM. So with that, shall we continue? Let's do it. All right. So how are we doing this year? We're, we're scraping that person's profile. We're getting that person's company LinkedIn. Once we get that LinkedIn, we go ahead and scrape that. And then we have the AI summarize it. And you'll notice here, we're keeping it really simple. Get the job, you know, the, the person details in this case, the company uh, profile, write a summary about this person and their work at their current company. And then we give it a, a role and a background in a very compressed format. You're an events coordinator and creating intro cards for executives at a luncheon. Your intro should highlight what is interesting about the person, their role, how long they've been in their current role, and the company they work for. Um, I want you to just imagine right now that you're an AE and your job is to crack into a net new industry, territory, or company size. Maybe you're going off market. One of the most powerful things you can do, the first thing you can do, actually, and I was really successful at this when I helped a startup go up market and broke quota, landed them their largest customer. And the way that I did it is the further up market you go, the fewer people are involved and the more they know each other. And so building little round tables actually is a really powerful way of prospecting. So if you're cold prospecting and not really getting anywhere, but you know these 10 or 12 people are kind of the luminaries in your region, your space, your industry, offer to bring them together for a digital luncheon or an in-person luncheon voting in the same place. And use you, you can use this workflow, which we'll share with you, to scrape all their profiles and say, hey, here are the people that I've invited to the round table. Would you like to join? And it works really well. It's a great way for you to build a genuine reputation and distinguish yourself as a seller. So, you know, any of these network-based approaches, you know, just give you miles of, of progress in terms of getting quality, closable pipeline. And so this is a tool that you could use for that purpose right now. When I put my profile in and I run this, you're going to see uh, Copy AI go through this process, you know, scrape that LinkedIn profile, get the company, scrape it, and then write the summary. And we'll, we'll look at the summary together briefly. So there you go. Great, great capture of my profile. You can see it's, it's grabbing the links from every company I've ever worked with. It pulls the one I'm most recently engaged in, which is of course drive the pipeline pulls that data and then gives a summarization based off of that. And you can see here, this is just, you know, this is four paragraphs but it's powerful, it's specific, and it's using the language that my company and my profile uses. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go look at how we're gonna turn this into introductions. This table tab here 
is where we can come in and put in a bunch of information. So what I've done is, and I'll go ahead and show you this list here. What I did is I took this list and I just went to, to the table version and then I just imported it. So um, show you the version of this here. Let's see here, table. Yeah, here we go. So. This is the table version. All I did is I just click import CSV and I pulled the file. So I'll go ahead and just grab that now. It's pulling in, you know, all of the information. And one of the things I love about copy is it already knows to grab the LinkedIn profile as the input that I'm looking for, for this process. I can import it and then I've already done it here. So I won't do it now. It goes in and imports those profiles and it runs the process for me. And uh, you'll notice that it worked for everyone except for Carly Dell. So uh, Clay's LinkedIn enrichment scraping platform is a lot more robust than Copies. Copies uses LinkedIn's API, and it doesn't always work on every profile. So in this case, we're going to go forward with some friction here in that we've got profiles on everybody except for Carly. So we're going to have to we're going to have to exclude her from the process. Um, but that happens. That happens you know, pretty often with these kind of net new AI tools is you'll get most of the way there, but not the whole way there. And so anything that you want to build, any value that you want to create, I think it's helpful to let people know upfront, hey, this is the idea. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going for an 80% solution. We're not going to be able to cover every edge case here, but we're going to get a far, fair amount of the way there in terms of value. And of course, if this was a small round table that I was doing, maybe I'd manually su supplement this information or try getting the information in another way. Um, but I'll just go ahead and uh, do that import now so you can see it in process. Now, I think you gave a shot at building this list as well, Josh. I'm curious, like, what were some of the challenges that you encountered as you started actually trying to build this list out? Yeah, so this was pretty, this was like the easy part was the workflow, creating the summarization. The hardest part was... Um, trying to figure out who to match the other person with and making sure that that match was reciprocal. It was really easy to match Josh with Brian, but it was really hard to figure out how to match Brian with Josh. Josh. So like, I found that to be the, I don't know why it was so difficult, but I tried so many different ways. I tried ChatGPT. I tried uh, prompt engineering with copy and, but I just, I kept struggling and I was like, pretend I got to the point where I got so mad. I put in all caps, pretend like you are tender. Like I tried so hard to like, I was, but the issue is it's a one-to-one -one match. So one yeah. person cannot be matched with multiple people. So anyways, it was pretty complex surprisingly. And I'm sure engineers watching this right now are like, bro, come on. But like as a no code solution guy, like, like I needed to figure out a way and I had such a hard time with that. But this, this using like this table functionality is so easy to batch process things. So definitely recommend using this versus trying to create a zap and adding a step um, to do any batch processing. This is really easy. Yeah, so I, I ran into the same challenges. Uh, once I had this list built, I fed it into copy and then I said, all right, pair each person with someone else in the network. And it did that really well, but they weren't reciprocal. And the way to make it reciprocal is to say, okay, if Brian and Josh get paired once, like for example, if the AI decides Josh is the right person to introduce Brian to, then Josh and Brian should be removed from the list so that the next assessment uh, works. But, you know, AI tools aren't great at this. So this is something that's sort of acknowledged generally. Uh, and just to give you an example of that, like we gave the, the list to ChatGPT and said, hey, you know, for each person in the list, find one person to recommend to connect with. The person you recommend cannot be from the same company and should be close in role, industry, and company size. Well, it did, you know, it did a great job of talking through the plan. I think, you know, ChatGPT is great at sort of like work planning or at least the scaffolding around that. So it broke the job down pretty well and it identified who it would need to make the connections with. And here you go. It's made a whole list of connections, but you can probably see <laughs> that, of course, it's connecting me with every other person because the rule is you can't 
to that connection. What should of course happen is once I'm connected to say Carly in this case, I shouldn't be available and it should say, uh, there's no one else left that can be connected because the company doesn't exist. The other problem here, especially when you're trying to build workflows is, okay, great. I know who I want to connect, but I don't have their LinkedIn. I don't have their email. I don't have an identifying ID. I'm not getting a CSV back. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of where we are in the process right now, and I think it's very likely with five, GPT-5 that this is going to be meaningfully solved, if not fully solved, is the ability to give a list and get back a list. This is a really common need. And when you're building AI workflows, generally, these are the kinds of things you're going to be scaffolding, building structure around. So like Josh, I was not able to solve this just in uh, the workflow with uh, Copy AI. So what I did instead is uh, worked with the Copy AI team, Rob over there, thanks Rob, uh, to build a another approach that is more similar to what we saw with the ChatGPT approach, which is to actually dump a CSV right in here, the list of attendees, and then have it do the matching. And as you can see, it did the matching as well with some you know, bonus formatting where, as we showed on episode three, being able to use someone's name as a LinkedIn URL works really well. But we have the same problem. I've got the matching done, but now how do I take this information and put it into my you know, HubSpot process or other workflow process that I have? There are things that I could do uh, such as formatting this as JSON and then taking that JSON and putting it into Zapier and so on. But none of them were very easy. So uh, in the startup world, we call this the hamster wheel moment. The hamster wheel moment is to say, okay, I'm building a process and I know that eventually it's going to be automated or it's going to be run by software, but I need to do some things manually until all of those things are built. And so we're going to show you the hamster wheel solution for this problem in today's episode. And in a future episode, we'll show you what the scale version is. Uh, just to give a quick walkthrough here of this build, all we did is say, all right, give me an input list of attendees. And then we dumped that CSV in there. But uh, Copy AI can also take JSON. So if you if you want to put that you know, CSV into a JSON format and drop it in that way, sometimes that can work a little better. We didn't find any other uh, differences. Uh, the prompt for this is analyze the list of the, the attendees in their summary, make the optimal matches, provide one to two sentences explaining why each match is a good pair. Each pairing should be unique and every person should be paired up. And you can see that we repeat that phrase down here as well. Um, it didn't matter. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes, you know, it can feel like AI is ignoring your instructions. Um, it, sometimes that's as simple as just reframing the discussions, saying it differently, adding emotional pressure. There's all kinds of techniques people do. But ultimately, you know, in this sort of experimental workflow building that we're doing, you're chasing the rabbit. I just decided to accept, okay, we've hit, we've hit a wall here in terms of the matching. But the other thing that I found interesting is both with ChatGPT and with Copy AI is that it would do matching for the first 10 people and then it just stopped. And so this is another sort of issue with AI is sometimes context windows or limits around context windows, basically how much information you can pass in and get back out, kick in. So I'm still investigating why that would be. Um, and that's the main reason why I stopped working on the formatting issue. I stopped working on the problem of getting the full list back from copy A, because if it was only going to give me the first 10 results, then it didn't make sense for the scaled solution. And we were trying to get this out in like, you know, 90 minutes. <clears throat> oh yeah. And let me be clear here. People yeah. sign up for our events last minute. So it wasn't that we were just dilly dallying and not getting this done early. We straight up had 10 registrants on the final day. So I was like, all right, Brian, we got to hold Let's until go. we get the final. <laughs> and so we were just scrambling. It was, you were on a plane from, from Phoenix, right? Yeah, and I, was, uh, I was basically on an all day flight building this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, I'm, I'm outing all of these challenges. We're sharing all of this with you because that's part of the spirit of building public. And what we want you to know is that even if you're really far along, Along the journey, you're going to find these friction points. The prompts, no matter what you do in the prompts, you don't quite get back what you're looking for. So how do you how do you reimagine what you're doing to achieve that? Um, maybe you're trying to accomplish something that's just not quite yet really wired up in 
a GPT or something like that. Um, and this is, again, back to that build versus buy. Obviously, one solutions, there are many, have worked on this problem and have solved it with AI, and you could use them, or you could build your own. I'm going to show you the, the middle solution, the build it on the plane solution. So the build it on the plane solution was to say, all right, well, I've got some basic things now. I, I was able to run this for you know everybody, and I'll rerun it there for Max and rerun it here for Carly. You'll see Carly will fail. Max will work again. Don't forget, rerunning your processes sometimes can make them work. There is a chain going on here, and it doesn't always, doesn't always succeed. So there you see Max's information comes through. So what I did is I just exported this as a CSV, and here's that CSV here. So you can see you know, there's the LinkedIn profile of the user, the company URL, and then the scraping, and then the summarization, and Carly is missing. So I've got this list. So at least now I've got my list of attendees, and I've got my AI summaries. And I've got this here. Now for you Excel monkeys, you can wire up some formulas, do some unique matching, and have it good to go. I like using Coda for this use case, so I'll just show you the Coda solution here. So all I did is just copy and paste in the attendee list that we had. So uh, I'll just even show you this is one of my favorite things about Coda is that I can just take this list here from Excel and bring it on over to Coda. We'll just call this the uh, CRO list two and drop that in. And you can see Coda turns it into a table immediately for me. And the benefit of it being a table is that when I then import the AI summaries, I can actually associate the summaries with the attendee list off of the LinkedIn, right? So I've got the LinkedIn on the attendee list. I've got it on my summary export. So um, for those of you who are interested in exploring Coda a little bit, I'll just show you how easy this is. All I did is uh, create another column. I said, go to that, you know, go to this AI summary here, create a relationship with uh, export, LinkedIn summary, there it is. And then I wrote a little formula. So Coda has a formula language just like Excel, where I said, all right, I want you to take that export LinkedIn summary. I want you to filter it. I want you to filter it by the LinkedIn profile equals this row. LinkedIn. Oh, right, just saying. So it's like an index match, but like with exactly. Coda. So That's it. an index match, you know, in, in one shot. And then all I had to do from there is say, add related columns and pull out that summarization and the value. And that's how I got this here. So now I've got my list of attendees and I've got my summarization. And that's how I was able to create this final sheet that has all the information from HubSpot and that summarization from copy.ai. So now I've got my, my, my combined asset, right? I got my list of attendees and I've got my summary, but I'm not really able to use ChatGPT or Copy AI to do the matching. What do I do from there? And so here's how I solve this. Now we're we're hiding some of the information here, but what I did is I basically used Coda to do a couple of things: group up headcount based on some ranges up to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 plus, no headcount, which was true of some of the freelancers, uh, you know, so solopreneurs and all consultants and so on. We've got our industry and we've got our job title. And then I had Coda's copy AI. Coda, Coda has its own AI. I had its AI analyze the job title and just tell me, is it an owner? Are they in marketing? Are they in sales? So now I can do this matching where I can say, all right, I can choose to match this CRO with a CMO in fintech, or I could match this CRO with another CRO based on their title because they're both in sales, even if this person might be called, you know, geeky sales because we all know that that's up in the air now in terms of what titles <laughs> you know, actually mean. What does the CRO title even mean? It was a popular topic last week. Um, so by using that, I'm now able to, uh, Coda has this great group by function. So I was basically able to group by the headcount range and the type of role, and that gives me my pairs. And then just like we did with Copy AI, I have all of my lists here, and then I can just select from this dropdown, which I'm not going to open because it will show people's actual LinkedIn. But uh, I can select from this dropdown who I want to pair it with. And then with Coda, I just did a little button so that if I paired someone, both profiles showed it. So I, I used Coda essentially in an automated fashion to group up all of the attendees by the different vectors and then go in and make a point 
you know, I, I was the AI. I went through and just clicked, okay, yep, those look similar, those look similar, those look similar. And it would pair them up and I got my reciprocal list. Once I had my reciprocal list, I was ready to go. All I had to do was click, you know, right here at Coda options, download a CSV. And that's the CSV that I sent you, Josh, where each person was paired up with that LinkedIn summary. This is beautiful. So basically we got 90, I would say like 90% of the way there with AI now that we're going through this full flow, because you were able to even use AI to categorize the attendees. And then you just did the the work. I wouldn't even call it light work. It was still a lot of work to like reciprocal match, but at least got you to this point to create equivalent of like a pivot table of yeah, groupings exactly. to make matching a little bit easier for you. I like that. So my takeaway from this, and this is just part of, you know, what we do at Drive Pipeline AI. My takeaway from this is this feels like a primitive. This feels like a use case that we're going to see showing up over and over and over again. So Josh, you've inspired me to uh, begin investing in building some lightweight, no code product solutions on top of these tools that would enable list matching like this to occur. And I can think of so many use cases where this would be helpful. Uh, and again, what I want to emphasize is, and, and this is really relevant on the term personalization, and this is what I'll end with. I think that everyone, myself included, imagine that AI's first and highest value to go to market teams would be an hyper-personalization. For those of you that have actually done hyper-personalization, this might resonate. Having done it myself and having seen several other teams do it as well, it turned out that hyper-personalization did not make that much of a difference. In fact, we tested hyper-personalized uh, messaging against just really good business value positioning. Hey, you're in fintech. Every CFO that we've worked with has said that they, you know, that end of quarter process is really painful for them. Are these three pain points that you often find you're dealing with? That kind of a value-based, pain-based sell outperforms hyper-personalization often. What I want to share with you is my thesis on why and how it's really relevant for this going forward. And here's why. Showing you that I know something about you is useful. It's helpful. It shows me that, you know, as a buyer, it shows me that you've put in a little more effort or you've, you've done a little bit more thought about who I am and, and what I'm going for. And that's great. But if you put in 15 personalization points, you're not going to score 15 points with me. You might even score less than one because then it'll start seeming like you're carpet bombing a bunch of personal information you've researched about me. What do I really want you to do? What I really want you to do as a buyer is I want you to think about what's relevant between who I am, what I do in my company, what you do and who you are and find points of engagement discussion. And it doesn't just have to be about solving problems, by the way. I get in all the time by people who want to find a problem to solve for me. And I, sometimes I just don't have it or it's not a priority. That's most of your buyers most of the time. But what they're doing is interesting to me. How they think about the problem is interesting to me. And if they were sharing that expertise and that perspective, hey, you might be thinking about it this way, but we found changing your mentality to this approach might work. Or you might be, you know, as I just talked about, you might be using data enrichment tools today like these, but you might be missing out on the freshest data source you can work with LinkedIn. So, so there's this way of engaging around topics. And I always come back to this. If you really want to be successful in this world where social selling is just baked into everything, always think of it as you've met that person at a conference, at a networking event. How are you going to chat them up? I'll tell you what you're not going to do if you're going to be successful at that event. You're not going to carpet bomb four paragraphs on how you can change their go-to-market motion in 30 days or less. That's not going to build a relationship. So uh, what... The big takeaway I'd love for you to get from this is while today with RevOps, with firmographics, with demographics, you can get decent pairings of people and topics. Having the whole data set of the LinkedIn profile and then giving that job to AI 
enables you, just like we did with the chapter head intros, to boil it down to one really relevant and interesting topic. And if it doesn't hit, guess what? You can use the same process to do the next really interesting and relevant topic. And in my experience, it only takes three or four of those before people start thinking, wow, this person actually really does have something to say to me. This person might be worth engaging with. Could not have said it better, Brian. What's in with that? We'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Brian. Thank, Thank you, copy.ai. Thank you, Coda. Thank you, all solutions that are enabling us to make amazing things happen here. Have a great day. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.